Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm Leslie with the New Mexico Small Business Development Center. I'm here to present Eric Spellman to you, who is going to present to you cryptocurrency, what every small business must know. I'm so excited about this one because I hear about cryptocurrency and I really have absolutely no idea how what it's all about. So this is going to be a great webinar for everyone. Eric is awesome at picking up your questions throughout the entire webinar. So type your questions in the Q&A and he, he pretty much looks through them all. He stops, he answers, no dumb questions. Just keep, keep them coming. We want to remind everyone, New Mexico Small Business Development Center wants to remind everyone about the importance of cybersecurity risks to your business. Take a look at our on-demand videos that we have on our YouTube channel. I'll chat over the link. We have a lot on cybersecurity. With all that, turn it over to Eric. Okay, thank you, Leslie. And this is going to be a fun one, folks. I promise this is going to be a fun one because everyone is talking about it, like Leslie said, and very few people understand it. So don't worry. This is going to be ground zero. Okay, you don't you do not have to be a techno nerd to understand uh, what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, so keep those questions coming and I will get to them as quickly as I can. But let's jump right into it. Cryptocurrency, what every small business must know. You know, we've got to define what it is first. I mean, if I'm going to be talking about it, if I'm going to be using that little word that over and over and over, you got to know what it means. So it's basically virtual money, okay? It is not money that is backed by gold or, or a substantial asset you can put in your hand. Uh, it's not money. It's not paper. It's not something you can hold. It is completely digital. Right now, the market of virtual money is basically uh, operating at about $1.3 trillion. Uh, it's kind of what it's worth. And that may not sound like a lot when you think about all the money in the world, but for as quickly as it came on the market, it is amazing and it is growing tremendously. And you're about to discover why. Basically, there's no middlemen. There's no banks to take their piece out of this. Uh, it's basically when you buy something, it gets transferred directly, not through a bank, directly to that person or that company. Uh, and so that's why it's so much cheaper is because you don't have all these things. You don't have the time periods like, you know, a check takes, you know, how many days to process or even a charge. You got to wait 24 hours. This is instantaneous. There's also no government control. No government is in charge of this. The U.S. government has no say in how money is spent or who it's spent with. This is completely about as free as it gets, okay? But that also makes it like a Wild West town because when there ain't no sheriff, the occasional person gonna get shot. So just keep that in mind. There are thousands of different cryptos out there uh, competing. Uh, and, and when I say competing, they want you to use them uh, as a currency. But that's how the market works. I mean, that's how the best companies rise to the top. Uh, and that's how we get the best of the best is through competition. So this is actually good. Uh, but just understand some of the little ones that are just hitting the market may disappear tomorrow. So be careful. The secret to the whole thing, the, the magic behind what makes this work is called blockchain. And that is a very important concept. Now, blockchain is, is kind of high tech, okay? It is. And I'm going to attempt to explain it in a very easy way. But if you don't get it, don't worry, because basically hardly anyone understands it. So anything you say with confidence at a party will probably be believed. So you got to realize that every single transaction that occurs with cryptocurrency is kept in an online ledger. You know, when you buy something and you spend money, there's a bank that keeps track of your money. The bank keeps track of how much cash you have. They have their own ledger and they keep track of all the transactions that you do. 
through their bank. Well, there is no bank here, but there is an online ledger and each crypto has an online ledger. Now you may be thinking, well, Eric, you know, can't someone just change that? Well, every transaction is verified repeatedly, okay? And the way it's done that is because the ledger, believe it or not, is replicated to just about every user. That's right. Every single person involved in using the crypto basically has a copy or at least a piece of the copy of the main ledger of everyone's transactions. And so when I say it's verified repeatedly, it's difficult for someone to insert a fake transaction because it won't match all the others that are already out there. And so it kind of polices itself. That's basically how blockchain is safe, is because everyone has the record. And so no one can insert a new record because it won't match everyone else's. I know that's complicated. I know that sounds confusing. But like I said, remember these points, mention, mention them at a party and no one will argue with you, even if you don't understand it. Now, how does cryptocurrency come about? You know, the way gold came about was we would mine it. And the reason gold was expensive was because there just isn't that much of it. You just can't find it everywhere. It's not like sand. Sand is not currency because there's so much of it. It's worthless. But gold is not, there's, there's not that much of it. So it's very valuable. So how do we make something that could be copied digitally worth something or difficult to create? The difference is math. Math is the key here. And so what happens is there are these large computers and they perform calculations based on an equation that gets harder and harder and harder as you go. In other words, every time a piece or a block, which is what we call it, a block of cryptocurrency is created, the equation to make the next piece is harder. And so eventually you need supercomputers, but then eventually you need computers beyond that. And so what happens is the amount of cryptocurrency that is created starts slowing down. Back in the beginning of Bitcoin, I could use a PC and create some Bitcoins. I'd be so rich today. It, it wouldn't have been that hard. But today, it is, there are people, there are people who still mine Bitcoin, okay? They, and that's what it's called. They mine it. But they need roomfuls, buildingfuls of servers working 24-7 using huge amounts of electricity. And that's the key. That's why not everyone is doing it, is because it's getting to the point where it's going to cost you more in electricity than the currency that you're actually creating. So, like I said, mining it is very difficult. And so you can do it, and you can have your computer mine a few cents at a time and just have it running in the background and I guess making yourself a little money. But it is very, 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 very difficult unless you go after some of the newer ones. You know, Bitcoin next to impossible to mine. But some of the other ones, you can mine a ton of it. Question is, will they survive? Let's move on. Is counterfeiting possible? Well, it's more difficult than paper. Paper is easier to counterfeit, okay? It does not require a lot of high-tech stuff. It mainly involves color copiers, okay? Really good color copiers. Uh, and they've made it more difficult for cash uh, to be copied. But I'm telling you, digital currency is way more difficult to copy. And the reason is because it has what we call a decentralized architecture. In other words, there isn't one computer at Bitcoin company that if you hacked, you could steal all their Bitcoin. It doesn't exist. You see, I already told you everyone's computer around the planet that works with this stuff has a copy of the official ledger. It's all encrypted, so you can't see it, but they have a copy of it. And what happens is 
those copies are verified over and over and over again. It is next to impossible to create counterfeit. It would, like I said earlier, it would require quantum computers. Now, when you heard me say supercomputers earlier, when I talk about supercomputers, the level above that is called a quantum computer. Now, I could do a whole talk on quantum, com quantum computers and how they're changing the world. Uh, but in fact, I'll just tell you real quick. Quantum computers are the coolest thing in the world. And if you ever want to look up something that will blow your mind, start researching quantum computers. There's only been a couple or a few created in the entire world because they're so difficult to create, but they can solve equations that used to take years or, or could not even be solved. Um, and, but they're still very new, very edgy on the edge on the, I would call it the bleeding edge of technology. Okay. But even then, if you had quantum computers, you would also have to somehow time it, which is next to impossible to where the other computers that have copies of the ledgers would have it as well. So it would be next to impossible. So just understand all of digital currency is based on math. It's in the inability of today's computers to solve it. Here's some very important things to remember. Very, very, very important things for you to remember when talking about cryptocurrency. First, if you're going to deal around in cryptocurrency, you got to get a wallet, a digital wallet, so to speak. Okay. And that's where you can keep all your cryptocurrency. The big, biggest one out there is Coinbase. And it is the one that seems to be the most supported uh, and the most safe. Uh, there are others out there, but Coinbase is the one I choose. It costs you nothing to download their wallet. Uh, and then the way Coinbase makes their money is by charging a teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny little bit of amount uh, whenever you buy or sell. That's it. I mean, that's, that's how they make their money. You're saying, isn't that what a bank does? Right, but Coinbase is not a bank. They're just a wallet. And so they just help facilitate the transaction between you and Bitcoin, between you and Ethereum, between you and Dogecoin. So they, they handle that. It's still cheaper than banks, trust me, because banks add on all these fees and all these other things, but Coinbase doesn't. It's actually much cheaper to do a financial transaction through crypto than it is through real money. Uh, but you got to remember your password, people. There ain't no go backs. This is the most important password of your life. There's already been a few stories of crypto people who had large wallets. And I mean, the biggest one I've heard of so far, the guy had $250 million worth of Bitcoin. And he forgot his password. And the thing about crypto is you only get, I think it's three chances, three chances. And if you don't get it right in three chances, it's gone forever, forever. And from what, I, what I've heard of the, about this guy, he's already used two and he's afraid to use his third. Imagine not being able to sleep at night. Ugh. Remember your password. Now, you also got to remember, no banks equals no protection. You know, if someone steals your debit card or credit card, you're protected. I mean, if they go out and buy some stuff, you'll get that money back. Not so with crypto. Nope. Uh, there is no protection like that. When you spend it, it's gone. And if someone else uses your wallet to spend it, it's gone. It's also not FDIC backed. Okay. You know, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. You know, they're the ones who back every bank account up to $100,000 in loss. So if a bank goes out of business, the government will come back and reimburse you $100,000 at the most. And that's why a lot of rich people spread their money around multiple banks is so that they're covered like that. But that doesn't exist either in crypto, okay? 
If it's gone, it's gone. Period. <laughs> Here's the biggest one of all. Transactions cannot be reversed. They cannot. They cannot. They cannot. The second you hit buy, it's done and cannot be undone. The only way it can be undone is if the party who received your Bitcoin gives it back. That's it. Okay? I'm not trying to scare you with this. I'm just giving you the facts, okay? You mustn't think of cryptocurrency like you think of today's money and how you do business. There are bigger rewards in crypto, but there's also bigger risks. So who are the big players? Let's talk about who the big players are. I mean, if you're going to start diving into this, who should you start looking at? Well, the biggest player of all, as we all know, is Bitcoin. Uh, they were the first ones out there. Then there's Bitcoin Cash, and I'll explain where that came from. I'm going to be talking about each one of these, so don't worry. There's Ethereum, which I just love the name. I, I, I have some of this just because I love the name. And then there's Cardano, which is very interesting, and I'm keeping an eye. And my favorite one that makes me grin every time is Dogecoin. Uh, and you'll, uh, you'll understand why in just a minute. But let's first talk about Bitcoin. Bitcoin was the very first one out there. They are the big player on the block. They are, they are the one that controls most of the cryptocurrency market. And the companies that are doing business with Bitcoin, I mean, uh, that are doing, uh, you can buy and sell with them, are primarily Bitcoin, okay? Uh, you're going to see, however, that Bitcoin is probably not going to be the only form of crypto out there. Believe it or not, small countries are actually adopting Bitcoin. And the kind of countries I'm talking about are the ones who are very, very unstable. And think about it. You have a very unstable country. So if you back your currency in Bitcoin, which has, is not owned by any government, a good example is Venezuela. Venezuela recently went to Bitcoin as one of its backed currencies. Currently in Venezuela, the US dollar is considered the currency uh, for its stability. And in fact, around the world, the US dollar is used as a form of st currency stability. But you see, even with what's going on with our inflation right now, that stability is fragile. And so a lot of these smaller companies, because they don't have to deal with foreign governments and the currency is not tied to a government like the US and has political strings attached to it and everything, they're going to crypto. Believe it or not, a lot of these small countries are actually gonna be adopting cryptocurrency like Bitcoin um, as a backing for their own currency. Here's why Bitcoin probably won't be the end-all, be-all, okay? And it's because the math, because it was the first one, the math was the hardest. And the computers have pretty much already hit their limit. Even the best computers in the world have hit their limit. So Bitcoin is capped at 21 million coins. There's only, there's only ever going to be 21 million Bitcoins, ever. And so basically, it's the cost of the coin that keeps going up. And that is how they measure it. So today with Bitcoin, you're, you're actually owning a piece of a coin. And chances are when you buy Bitcoin, you do not own an entire coin, which you'll see in just a second. Now, Bitcoin was really the first cryptocurrency out there. And it was created by Satoshi Nakamoto. Okay? Uh, he is the one who came out with the white paper. Now, a white paper is like a research paper, which basically proved that it could work. He's the one who kind of explained blockchain, how it could be used with currency. And so he created Bitcoin. And everyone credits uh, Satoshi Nakamoto uh, with creating this amazing thing. But here's the creepy, weird thing. He doesn't exist. No one can find him. 
In fact, most of the people believe he never did exist, that it was simply a pseudonym used by a group of scientists somewhere who didn't want to be known. It's extremely mysterious. And probably there will be a movie made about it one day. But if you ever want to go down a deep, dark internet tunnel, start doing research on Satoshi Nakamoto. It is one of those weird, I just think it's interesting that the biggest currency, cryptocurrency on the planet, no one knows who created it, okay? Some people believe he does exist and just doesn't want to be known. But trust me, the best detectives, the best people out there, they can't find a trace of this person, okay? Now, remember I told you that a Bitcoin I told you most of you probably couldn't even afford one Bitcoin, okay? And that's because the current value of one Bitcoin is $42,626, okay? Remember, I told you there's a max of 21 million coins out there. And so as more and more people buy Bitcoin, the price of it goes higher and higher and higher. But, but that's how currency works. You know, it becomes more valuable, the more rare it becomes. And if everyone is hoarding it and not spending it, the value goes through the roof. Which is why Bitcoin Cash was created. Because the people at Bitcoin realized that they needed something that would scale easier. They didn't realize it would be as popular as it was. And so they came up with a new form of currency it's by the same people who do Bitcoin, but it's called Bitcoin Cash. And it's made to scale easier and you can actually mine it a tiny bit easier. The reason it works is because the blocks, remember I told you that when you buy, when, when these mathematical problems are solved, they create blocks of Bitcoin or coins, if you will. Well, the small Bitcoin blocks, which is the first cryptocurrency, the one I just showed you, uh, they, were, they were small. They were very small. And it took longer for them to transact, if you will, because they couldn't hold near as much information. Okay. Well, cash blocks are eight times larger. In other words, Bitcoin cash, their blocks are eight times larger. Uh, to be honest, I'll just throw out a little bit of techno here. A Bitcoin block is one megabyte. A cash block is eight megabytes, which means it can hold a lot more information requiring less information to flow over the internet. I know that doesn't sound right, but it is, okay? It's a lot more efficient. And so it scales a lot easier. In other words, a lot more people can own Bitcoin cash than they can a Bitcoin. And the transactions take a lot less time to happen. It's not as stable as Bitcoin, mainly because not as many people are involved in it yet. But it is backed by the Bitcoin name. And that is why you're going to see a lot of people jump to it. And to be honest, I would probably jump into Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash first, uh, but just because it's easier. And you can own a little bit of it and feel like you actually have something instead of a sliver of a coin. Okay. Uh, it is backed by their name. When I say it's not as stable, it's just not as used by as many people. The current value of one Bitcoin cash coin is $556. Uh, so you can kind of see, and that's as, as of today. By the way, if you're watching this as a recorded video and not live, you need to know that all these numbers are changing. So do not hold me to these numbers because these numbers will be different tomorrow, okay? Next is Ethereum. And I told you, I loved Ethereum mainly because of the name. It's just so futuristic. It does play second fiddle uh, to Bitcoin. And if I were to say, if someone were to ask me, you know, other than Bitcoin, and maybe Bitcoin Cash, you know, who, who is the next player? you know, after the company called Bitcoin, it's Ethereum, okay? 
Uh, they're the second biggest one out there. They do control, believe it or not, 18% of the crypto market. So they are more stable than just about every other cryptocurrency out there except for Bitcoin. Now, what makes Ethereum a little stronger or different than Bitcoin is it, it specializes in auto-execute contracts. In other words, it was designed for it. It was completely built. And what I mean by an auto-execute contract, you can set up a whole bunch of computer programs that will immediately spend or buy Ethereum. Uh, good example uh, would be if you wanted to uh, purchase some NFTs. Now you're going, Eric, you keep throwing all these abbreviations at us. How are we going to remember them? An NFT is a non-fungible token. See, what was the point of me even telling you that? It didn't clear it up, did it? A non-fungible token, and the only neat reason you need to remember that is to impress people at parties, okay? But I'll, I'll explain real quick what a non-fungible token is. And to be honest, it's probably going to be a video that I do at some point in the future. An NFT is a digital asset. For instance, if I take a picture of my pretty face, I could sell it as an NFT, okay? It gets like a digital signature done by math so that it can't be, no one can just say they own it. And it's basically a way for me to say that that is the official copy. And I can sell the official copy of my face to someone as an NFT and they can buy it. And that NFT is like a certificate saying that they actually own that picture. If you were to Google NFTs or the news about NFTs, you will see that there's a lot of NFTs selling very high prices, very high prices. A lot of digital artists are starting to make money now through NFTs. So Ethereum is one of the big cryptos being used to buy NFTs. You're saying, Eric, the world is getting so complicated. No, it's not. It's just that a whole bunch of nerds are coming up with words that you don't understand. But the concept behind all of this is still the same. Assets can be bought with money. It's the same concept. We're just putting it into the computer world. That's all. Okay. The current value of Ethereum is $2,872. To own one Ethereum coin, is $2,872. Cardano. Cardano. Cardano is for all of our eco-friendly friends. Okay. It was founded in 2015 by one of the co-founders of Ethereum. Okay. He kind of went off and started his own. And the reason he created it was because it uses less energy to mine. You see, one of the reasons that a lot of the uh, a lot of eco-friendly people legitimately complain about digital currency is because the mining consumes megawatts, gigawatts of electricity in computer uh, usage. I mean, it gobbles it up. It uses so much electricity to mine this stuff, and so what? Cardano does is they figured out a way for it to use less energy. Uh, and I'm not going to go into how they did that because it's definitely a lot more technical. But the current value of Cardano, which by the way, they call their money ADA, A-D-A, but most people just call it Cardano. Okay. And the current value is at $1.42 per Cardano coin or ADA coin. <laughs> and this is the one that brings a smile to my face every single time. Dogecoin. Okay. Believe it or not, it was created as a joke. It was named after a dog meme. Uh, there's a particular breed of dog. I think it's Japanese or Chinese or something. And it's the Inam Inamuna. I can't even say it. It's a particular kind of dog. And it's named after a dog meme. 
What also makes it kind of a joke is that it's extremely easy to mine. I mean, you could set up your own computer and start mining Doja coins fairly easily. Uh, you know, you're going to use some electricity, but you could gain yourself some Doja coins just on your computer. You know, just add them to your wallet. You ever wanted to just do something fun like that? Uh, so let's see. I think I saw a question. Maybe not. Let's see. Nope, nope. Just more messages from Leslie. Okay. It is therefore cheaper, but because it is easy to mine, guess what? It doesn't have much value, but it's gaining traction. And primarily because of Mr. Elon Musk. Elon Musk, remember, he threw out, I'm, I'm all into Dogecoin. And what happened to the value of Dogecoin? It went through the roof, and then it fell like a comet. Okay, it's extremely unstable. Extremely. But it's fun. And, and since you can mine it from your own computer, it's not that difficult. Uh, and so you can actually gain yourself a little Dogecoin and regardless of how much it's worth. Um, I don't know. The current value of one Dogecoin today is 21 cents, okay? Uh, but that could drop or it could go through the roof. Who knows? So the real question, when it all comes down to it, Mr. Small Business Owner, is who accepts this stuff? I mean, who are you going to pay with this stuff to buy stuff? Believe it or not, there's some big companies out there. Microsoft is actually taking Bitcoin. And when I say cryptocurrency, pretty much all of these are accepting only Bitcoin, okay? Because it's the big dog on the block. Unlike Dogecoin. <laughs> Sorry, I had to make that joke. Microsoft is one of the big ones. They were one of the first ones. And basically, they. They are helping to cement that a lot more tech firms are going to start taking it. Uh, and that's the high tech market is going to be the market that does this first because they're the ones who understand it. And they're the ones who understand the actual safety and security of it. And this one will blow you away. Home Depot. Believe it or not, you can pay your next purchase of paint with Bitcoin. You can do that today at any Home Depot. It actually is an option. Starbucks takes Bitcoin. Uh, you can buy your next coffee with Bitcoin. So even if you just, you know, have a little bit of Bitcoin, you can have a little bit of coffee with that. Whole Foods also accepts Bitcoin. And others are being added all the time. And you see that this is going to come like a wave. As more and more large companies start accepting digital currency, you're going to see more firms accept it as well. And when you see more firms accept it as well, you'll see more people buying into those currencies. And that's why you see a whole bunch of investors buying into crypto, because you are seeing, you are seeing this amazing new economy being born. That's basically what's happening, people. You're witnessing a brand new economy, an economy that goes beyond the United States, an economy that is worldwide, an economy that doesn't have boundaries. So let's just sum all this back up. And yes, I'm leaving a huge amount of time for questions on this one because I knew there would be. But what are the small business takeaways from this? Okay, because really that's who I'm talking to. What I recommend is that you use play money to learn the system. Every one of you has play money. And I'm being very specific when I say play money. Do not take all the money out of your company and put in crypto. Okay, I am not taking responsibility if you do. Pick some play money. Money that, it, okay, call it your Vegas money. You know what I mean? You go to Vegas with a dollar amount in your head, if you're smart, 
knowing that if you lose it, you still had a great time. That's what I'm talking about. You take your Vegas money and you buy some of this stuff. Maybe buy a little of each just to see what's going on. Just to start to understand how the transactions occur. First thing, of course, you need to do is download that wallet. Remember? Go to Coinbase, download the wallet, and then they will help you facilitate buying some digital currency. I would start with Bitcoin. It's the most stable. And granted, you're only going to get a sliver of a piece of a sliver of one of those $42,000 coins. But you just never know. You just never know. It's kind of like if I would have invested in Google when it first came out, I mean, I could, I could have, I could have thrown a thousand dollars at Google and been a billionaire today. Watch the major players, okay? And what I mean by that is, you watch the major cryptocurrency players. Watch Bitcoin. Watch Ethereum. You know, watch, watch Cardano. Watch. There's others out there in the wings. And believe it or not, if you really want to have fun with this. Go pick one of the super small players because that's where it's kind of like buying a penny stock. Your chance of success is like maybe 1%. But if you succeed, you know, and also go pick a little one that you can actually mine with your little home computer. Get a whole bunch of coins. Have fun with this. It's actually, you know, some of you sit there with your cell phone and you play these virtual Vegas games where you're earning these credits and garbage. Those credits are never going to be worth any dollars. If you really want to, if you really want to gamble, gamble with some virtual currency. But once again, listen to me. Do not use real money. Not your real money you need every day. Not the money you need to run your business. Not the money that you've put away for a rainy day. Use play money, money that you would have spent on a lottery, money you would have spent in Vegas. Please don't go crazy with this. It's very easy to do and your eyes will light up like dollar signs and you can fall into a pit. So as much as you hear me saying, have fun with this, it's gotta be fun. The minute it stops being fun, you stop. Also, keep an eye on the feds. That's right, the government. Now, right now, the government has no say. Government has no say in Bitcoin. They have no say in how these cryptos work. They have no say in even oversight and what's being spent where. So yeah, there's probably criminal organizations out there transferring money around the world using crypto because like i said there's no government remember i told you this is like a wild west town which means there's also going to be some con artists out there who will try to trick you out of your bitcoin if you're actually going to use bitcoin to buy and sell things you stay with vendors you know because what did i tell you there's no protection whatsoever if you, if you spend Bitcoin or spend crypto, you can never get it back, okay? But what I'm saying about the feds is whenever the government starts to see something take off, whenever the government starts to see something become capitalistically profitable, they want their peace. And so I think what you're going to notice is that in the near future, the federal government's going to start getting involved or at least try to and try to put some sort of regulation, try to tax it, try to do something with it. But I'll be honest, I don't see how they can. It's, like I said, we're entering a new world, we're entering a new age, we're entering a new economy. Boundaries are slowly going away. And no, I'm not gonna use the politically charged phrase, one world government, I'm not gonna say that. I'm just telling you that technology is allowing us to interact with people around the world in ways we've never been able to before and to bypass the problems that have kept us from doing that. 
And with that, I now open it up to any questions that you have on this. I specifically left more time for questions on this one than any other talk I've done uh, because it is such a hot topic right now. It is a hot topic. We do have a phone. Uh, we do have someone that's called in on the phone. Um, but while we're waiting for questions, because my head is spinning, mm -hmm. Eric. And uh, so, okay. So we have like actual retailers that are looking into this, correct? You see yes. Home Depot. So how, and you, but did you not also say that it's, that once a transaction is, is done, it's done, would they? It's done. So how would you, how would you use it in your retail store? Well, that's and, easy. Okay. That's easy. In other words, when you buy something from Home Depot, you still have a receipt. When you buy something from Home Depot, you still have a copy of the transaction that you spent money with Home Depot, and they do too. And so if you return the item, they can refund you, refund your Bitcoin. Because y'all are the only two involved. There's no bank. In other words, your money, there's a proof that you had the Bitcoin. There's proof that it's that money is now in Home Depot's account. And so if you come back to Home Depot, Home Depot can confirm that that was your Bitcoin. You see what I'm saying? There's just so, no banks involved. So if Home Depot, and please people ask questions because my brain, again, it is so spinning. So if you collect taxes, you would have to pay, you would have to collect the taxes on the sale and then you would have to pay your taxes with another form of currency, correct? That is correct. Okay. okay. And that is and that is one of the issues. It's just a clerical issue, to be honest. But that is one of the issues that these companies have worked through. In other words, they are charging, for instance, when you buy something at Home Depot, they have a system, obviously, where it knows what the value of Bitcoin is at any given instant and does a currency exchange. In other words, if you're being charged 20 bucks for that gallon of paint, then it is instantly like a, like a currency conversion changes over into Bitcoin. And so it knows how much to charge you in Bitcoin. Well, when you return it, you're gonna return it and it was $20 because that's the currency that Home Depot is gonna refund you. And they will find out what the amount of Bitcoin that is at that moment, and they will refund you that amount. So in the okay. cases of the large retailers, it is still tied to U.S. currency, okay? Okay. But you're spending and getting refunded back in Bitcoin. And that's what the government really can't track. And so, like I said, watch the feds. The last thing I said was watch the feds because trust me, they're, when this gets big enough, right now we're up at $1.3 trillion dollars invested in this stuff and the feds are going to start noticing and trying to figure out a way to get their hands on some of them. So you see Bitcoin, well, I shouldn't say Bitcoin. You, I should say cryptocurrency. You see that trending? Oh gosh, yes. Okay. Oh gosh, yes. Uh, it, it, it's only going to grow and trust me, eventually it will replace all currencies. Mark my words. Right now we're in the wild west days. It's kind of like when the internet first came out. There were no controls on anything. Everyone could post anything. It was free. To, it was the purest form of free speech. But then what happened? The government comes in. They start creating laws. You know, Congress came out with the Communication Decency Act. Remember that? Then they came out with the Can Spam Act. You know, talking about con artists using email. You know, Congress passed laws and those laws do affect people. And then they came out with they came out with laws about people copying movies and copying digital assets like music. But the laws happened after the technology. What you are now seeing and why people are so interested in cryptocurrency is because it's like the Internet is being born again. It's like it's like. It was exciting when the internet first came out because there were no rules, no laws. No, everyone was trying to figure it out and there was no one controlling anything. That's what this is. 
It's fascinating. It is fascinating. I, uh, I, I'm glad that we're recording because <laughs> we, will, we will send everyone a copy of the presentation today that you can review. I want to tell you that we do have Eric coming up again. So it, the one good thing I like about all his presentations that uh, if you come to this presentation and you go home and uh, you find out, wait, I have some questions, you can visit any of his webinars because they all kind of tie in with, with new trends and the way the world's working and stuff bring them to the next webinar that you'd like to attend. Eric and and just, 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 to inter just to interrupt, just one second. If, if I'm going to give any homework off of this particular video, because I don't want this just to be, oh, that was interesting. The one thing you can do that is totally safe, go and download a wallet. Go to Coinbase. There's other wallets out there, but Coinbase is my favorite. And download a wallet just so you can start understanding this. Because trust me, there will be people who will ask you if you accept cryptocurrency. It's going to happen, and it's going to happen sooner than you realize. So go ahead and start getting familiar with it. Uh, start understanding it. Because remember, remember, your competitors are probably pretty dumb to this, okay? And one of your competitive advantages is that when it really does start going strong, you've already got a foundation from which to operate. So my daughter has gotten into it and uh, I have no idea what she's talking about. So I'm glad I have this. But if you download a wallet, so you have to, let's say, because we're in the beginning stages, you have a retail outlet or something or some kind of business to business, they would also it's not going to be like it's not a credit card it's going to be like we have like apple pay i i, I mean well keep in here's how it works right now when people come to your retail establishment you know you have a little charge machine and that charge machine goes through a processor now the piece that's missing for small businesses right now is that most processors do not support cryptocurrency yet. It's still too new. But you'll remember most processors didn't support Apple Pay, but now they do. You know, it, the processor will be really be the key because when the processor, whoever your processor is, you know, the one who takes the charge from the card and ends up putting it in your bank account, the processor will be the one who puts it in your wallet. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's really going to be the small business can't just one day decide, oh, I'm going to take Bitcoin. You can't take it at, at the cash wrap, you know, until you're able to process it. Now, you can have a situation. Now, hear this. You can have a situation where you both have your cell phones and they buy something from your store. And you say it's going to cost two Ethereum coins. And so right then and there, y'all both hold up your cell phones and y'all do the transaction right there. It does not require a processor. You see what I'm saying? And then you would hand whatever you sold them to them right then and there. That can be done now. But if you want to make it easy, you know, that's when a processor is going to come into play, but they're going to charge their piece too. You got to remember that every time you put someone in the mix, they want their piece of the transaction. And so the easiest thing of all would be for someone just to show up and you, you technically you could start selling things in Bitcoin. Now you're as a small business, you could, but you would also have to figure out how you're going to pay the taxes on that. And I'll, to be honest, I would talk to your accountant and, uh, about that. I would not take my advice on this at all. Do not consider this professional financial advice. I would contact a financial professional because there's got, you will have to figure out a way to give the state its due. Because if they think you're going under the table, 
and not charging tax and using crypto so it can't be tracked through bank accounts, they would probably try to come after you. I'm just saying the technology is ahead of the legislation right now. That's all. Ooh, okay. <laughs> it is ahead of the legislation right now. And uh, we do remind everyone to go to nmsbdc.org, talk to your counselor about the latest stuff that's coming for small businesses. Let me update everyone before we jump off that next week we have cash is king cash management for your small business we have eric coming back secrets to selling ads on your website we have eddie who's going to be talking about three steps to attracting and retaining customers we have a bilingual session on transitioning to the new normal we have personal liability and how to avoid it we have another bilingual session on accessing financial resources. And we have Peggy that's going to be giving us um, PPP, idle and employee retax, uh, tax credits, employee retention tax credits implications for you. We also, I, oh, I'm missing Vic. We have a, a business modeling, putting a business plan into action. So we're gonna have all these webinars for you guys to take care of your small business. Eric, if you wanna wrap it up and then we'll say thank you to everybody. Technology, we, we live in a changing world and technology is not something that should be feared, but it is something that should be studied before you jump right into it. And the key is for you to do your own research and not take even what I say uh, as what you should be doing, but do your own research and, and go out there and. Remember, use play money, but get into this because it will replace money as we know it. Thank you, Eric, as always. Always such great information. You guys have a great rest of your week and we will see you next time. Thanks.